today on Location and Style, it's all about colour. And I'm excited for you to meet Wayne Good, interior designer, chef, and owner of Arcanda Antiques in Gordonton. This is a man that's all about style and colour. Well, thank you, Wayne. Thank you for inviting us round. I pleasure. have been super excited about coming out here to talk to you. So just first of all, just tell us who lives here. Tell us about yourself, your, your home, your animals maybe? Yes, certainly. Well, um, I, I live here, but um, I, I share it with uh, a menagerie of animals, both living inside and outside. So I have two dogs, uh -huh. and then I've got a pig called Winston, and I'm about to get Clementine, and then I've got various chickens and ducks and things, and, and they give me such joy. So what we did is we have, um, well it's, it's a farm, it's actually a, what you call a runoff farm of 110 acres and we took uh, two acres out of it. It's funny how I still speak in acres but I measure in metres and centimetres but anyway. There was uh, a tractor shed, 120 square metre tractor shed. Here on the Here, side. already here, not doing anything really but housing a lot of junk. So that is what we turned into our antique barn, which is sort of was the initial focus of what we're doing here. And then we moved two properties on. This house is an Air Force, is an Air Force house, or was an Air Force house from Hobsonville in Auckland. So essentially, I guess, a state house oh, okay. um, and built as such. So solid as solid with the terracotta tile roof. So, and the funny thing is when the, when the house movers brought it here, they sat it down the wrong way round. <laughs> <laughs> so we were so lucky that we were here to say, turn no. it round, and they weren't very happy about doing that. And then we found an old classroom, an old school prefab, um, and many people will remember them, I do. They were freezing cold in the winter and stinking hot in the summer, but full of character. So we've put that next to the house. The buildings were placed here just before the first lockdown. Once lockdown was over the builders got stuck in and they had the house completed for me to move in Labour weekend of that year. The classroom of course having another lockdown last year and income not being what it was it's still sitting there waiting to be done but that will be a cook school. Lovely. How would you describe your style? My style for my decorating style. my decorating yeah. style for myself is very different to a decorating style that I would use professionally. For me, it's eclectic. Mm -hmm. I love things. I, I, I am into clutter, but I define clutter as being the orderly arrangement of objects of interest, not just a whole lot of rubbish all over the place. Yeah. Um, and I think people get a little bit confused about that. They think clutter and they think mess. But done well, I think clutter, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Um, and everything in the house really has a story. And if it doesn't have one, I just make it up. So I guess from a professional perspective, it's about finding out who people are and then try and um, reflect that in their home. Absolutely. But not everyone has the ability to be able to no, do that. No, they don't. They, 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 and that, that, that's just, some people have an, a, an innate sense of style and they can look at a room and be able to, to, to arrange it in a way that it, that it works, that it's beautiful and it, and it sits in. Other people go and look at it and say, I don't know what to do. I have no idea. And, and I think to seek professional help to help you achieve that is a really good investment. Very good. Because you're spending a lot of money, one assumes, and putting your house together and it might only be a couple of hours with somebody. I choose my clients that I'm going to work with who do want to, put it this way, you'll never get white from me. <laughs> so you're not going to do a black and white interior? Oh my god no. <laughs> I'm not going to give people purple walls no. either. I, I feel, I mean I look at my house every day obviously mm -hmm. and um, but people come in and they go they come to the door. When they come to the barn, I say, if I like the look of them, I'll say, would you like to come and look at my cottage as long as the bed's made? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, oh, to be warned, anyone, if you come and you're not invited to the house. <laughs> you haven't made the grade. 
and I understand it's not for everybody. And occasionally I've brought people in and they've sort of, ah, oh, okay. And I think, oh, well, that was a mistake. <laughs> and I love it when people are interested and I'm happy to tell people the history of, of things um, that are in the house. Because, I mean, there are some interesting things and there's some really old. I mean, I've, uh, you know, I've got a, a book in there from the 1600s and, you know, my, my, my long case clock is about 240 years old and I don't know the history of those things but I I love thinking how did that book or how did that clock get here and and what's its story who did it belong to and I find that really interesting very interesting what would you say is your favorite part of the house right now my kitchen it's my dream kitchen and it's so compared to a lot of people's dream kitchen, so humble, but it's it's what I like. It doesn't conform to your standard, standard Not kitchen. at all, I didn't want that. And you know, I mean, I cook a lot in France mm -hmm. and in old cottages, and I guess that's what I was replicating here, and I feel I've achieved it. It was really funny. All I wanted in the kitchen that was going to be built in was a, a fitted bench sink, you right. know, a good, decent sized sink, and um, and a dishwasher, of course, you've got to have some some sort of modern technology <laughs> and a small. People look at my fridge and they say, "Oh my God, that's a small fridge!" And I say, "Well, I've got a storeroom with a very big fridge as well." And we had the kitchen unit made. And when I ordered, I said, "I don't want doors." And the builders put it in. I got this phone call from the builders. Where are the doors? And I said, "Well, there aren't any." And there was <laughs> stunned silence on the end of the phone. And I said, "Just trust me. I know what I'm doing." Which is a classic thing in your French country, because that's French the linen, kitchen, the linen curtains. Absolutely. Absolutely a classic thing. And with the whole, and I've seen them as well with brick. Oh, yeah. I'd love yeah. that. But also, you, you cook for a crowd. I mean, you have your cooking classes. At the and, moment, and I do. You do. Yes. Um, and it works. That, that space that you've created works. So you don't have to have enormous bench spaces. And the bigger the space, the bigger the mess. Yeah. And I guess because I trained as a chef and, and you are working in small spaces, um, in commercial kitchens, and I carry that over into my own home. And so when I cook, I clean as I cook. I can't stand working in a shambles or it really, I get quite edgy. See, I'm, I'm not a gadget person either. I have a beautiful stove. I, I have a far more beautiful stove than I ever thought I was going to have here. And But I don't have a lot of gadgets. I have a food processor. I have a KitchenAid mixer, which is about 30 years old. Um, I don't have a microwave. I don't need a microwave. I don't want a microwave. You know, I have good knives and I have useful tools in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. but I don't have a lot of gadgets. I don't have an air fryer and I don't have a this and a that and the other. No air fryers? No, I believe they're good. I don't know. I've never had one. <laughs> no and I certainly don't have a deep fryer because <laughs> I'd be bigger than I am now. What's a, a Sunday morning in, in the Wayne household? Depends what I'm doing in the day. Mm. Often I'm working on a Sunday because I'm in the bar. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah, but we don't open till 10. I yeah. mean, my God, you can't open too early and no. leave my beauty sleep and it <laughs> takes time. You don't look like this in a hurry. <laughs> Coffee. Coffee. Mm. I, you, I don't do anything. You don't really talk to me until I have coffee and I have good coffee. I, speaking of not having gadgets, I have a really good coffee machine. Um, and coffee's very important to me. So it's sitting there, it's, I always have the concert program playing and on a Sunday morning it's lovely. Then I read the news, should I say I skim over the news because it's so depressing, who wants to read it in full? Um, just to see if the world's going to end or if there's anything I need to know. And then, you know, then I'll just see what my day does. If I'm not working, you'll find me in the garden if it's a nice day. So I did notice your herb garden is absolutely luscious. Yes, it's the best I think I've ever had. It is stunning. I have, no, it, even in this dry weather and even out here, I'm, I'm amazed at how beautiful that is. Watering. Yeah. And the soil here is sensational. Ah. People comment on, I mean, my garden's only a year old. A like, year? A year. Wow. And although it's looking a little tired because of the, the dry and the heat, things do grow exceptionally well. I don't think it's because I have any more of a green finger than anybody else. 
um, it's it's the soil. You have a BM, a little B&B. We do. I've only had one lot of guests stay. With COVID. Because of COVID. Mm -hmm. I have lots of friends to stay. They love coming here to stay, funnily enough. Could be the food, could be the beer, I don't know. <laughs> could be the company. Could be the, or could be the wine or the whiskey or whatever. <laughs> I love living here. I've never been so happy in my whole life as I am here. Honestly. And, um, and a, a big part of it is, is this. bathrooms I yes. have to talk about those because we did have a little look and the beautiful Spanish tile that, that yes, you've got on got, the floor I wanted I didn't want anything in the house to look new I wanted it all to look as though it had a history and so I wasn't going to have a shiny bathroom by any stretch of the imagination obviously you have to have a toilet and you have to you know I made the vanity as a well, I made up the vanity in, in my bathroom. So it's an old cabinet with a vessel on the top and a tap. Gorgeous. The tiles we found in, in Parnell in Auckland and they're handmade Spanish tiles. We used Designers Guild wallpapers in the bathroom. For the paints, I used Porter's paints because I love their finish, I love their colours. And so, and they're readily available now in New Zealand. How does your home make you feel? Joy. I love it. I mean, I, I, I think it's really important that you love the space that you live in. And I've lived in lots of different spaces, some more humble than others because of circumstances in my life. But um, I always ensure I have a home that makes me feel joyful. But this, th this is the ultimate for me. I, you know, whenever I go away, put it this way, when we can travel overseas, and we do travel overseas quite a lot when we can, I'm as happy the day I come home as the day I go. Oh. I'm as excited, because I love my home, it's important to me. What would you suggest, or what would your advice be to someone, one item, one thing they should have in their home? Colour. Oh Lord, honestly, it's, it's colour to me. To have colour in your life is so important. I can't imagine living in a space that was devoid of colour. I mean, I'm not saying that I could have a living room that was bright primary yellow, but, you know, having the right colours in your space. And I think it's... Confidence of people to use the colour. Yeah, and if you're not, get some help, you know. But get some help from the right person that's not just going to... This is what I, I think depresses me a little bit with... with um, I'm probably going to tread on toes, and you might edit this, but building companies, you know, they have people in who are supposed to be colour consultants. Very rarely do I see any colour. It's all the same. It's all the same. It's the neutrals. So for me, I think colour is really important, and a good bed, and a good stove. If you are going to have white walls, and I do get it. Mm. Well, your walls are relatively neutral, but you are, it's covered with art and painting. And there's yeah. coloured furniture, coloured and furniture. there's porcelain, yeah. and there's all yeah. pottery and all this sort of stuff. So if you are going to have very neutral walls, don't go and buy a neutral lounge suite and, you know, get some, at least get some coloured cushions or get a coloured chair or put some art on the wall or, you know, and, you know, don't be afraid to put holes in your walls, for goodness sake, to hang the art. It's men who seem to mostly have the issue with putting holes in freshly painted walls. You're not going to see it. There's a painting on the top. <laughs> and then when you do see it, you're moving out. That's right. Well, I think that just about wraps it up. So thank you so much for inviting us. Oh, Your pleasure. home is beautiful. It's been exciting and I've been so looking forward to it. Oh, thank you. And I look forward to coming back again sometime soon. Yes. And having a look through the antique. Yes. Maybe the cooking school in the future. Yes, definitely. It'd be amazing. Well, so thank you. Well, I love sharing. You know, it gives me an enormous amount of pleasure to, to share. Um, I call it my little bit of paradise. Mm. And it is. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is. It is. So thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.